All right, um, so what I'm going to do here is um, do kind of a, a large upgrade on uh, this Game Boy that I've been sent. It's a really cool case, by the way. I think it's a DS case. Um, my son would be all over this, um, but the case really has nothing to do with it. Uh, we have a Game Boy in here, very well packed. And um, what we're doing is putting in a funny playing IPS screen. Um, we are replacing all of the capacitors. So this should be, I think it's empty. Yeah. These are main board capacitors. So replacing all the capacitors. And um, there is a audio mod down here. And we're going to do internal pro sound. And there is also a, um, what's it called? Um, what's the name is? Retro Robot, I think it is. Uh, basically a, a power cleaner for specially designed for IPS. So um, I've got a couple of these myself. Um, there is also a, a Retro 6 one that I actually got and is not great. Um, but this one is supposed to have been designed for um, IPS displays, so Retro Robot, um, which is cool because I think they're based in the UK as well. So that's what we're going to do. So let's get this Game Boy open. Oh, and also bonus, I'm also going to uh, modify these wires so they are... Um, USB charging cables for the Game Boy and the problem is with the Game Boy is that it's so old it has the positive on the outside of the um, what's it called the DIN um, whereas these cables these days they all have negative on the outside and positive on the inside so I'll have to cut this wire open like flip over the wires and then uh, uh, put it back together again so I'll do that as well. Um, hopefully I'll edit this video so you have to watch all these pieces. Um, but let's see how we do. All right, let's get this open to start off with. Um, so I'm doing this as a, you know, I do Game Boy modding at the moment for free um, because I like doing it. Um, I mean, obviously I'm not, buying all the kit. This kit was supplied to me um, and I'm just doing the modding for free. Uh, as long as postage is, is covered then I'm happy to do it and whilst I don't have an absolute ton of people sending me stuff I'm also happy to do it. It's a nice little distraction on my days off. Um, well, when I can get time between the kids and looking after them. Um, and being a parent. Um, so what I'll do, uh, so also that it's kind of worth reviewing the entire the entire Game Boy itself. So it's a little bit grubby, which is fine. What we'll do is we'll take the case um, and drop it into uh, a sink, and give it a good clean with uh, soap and water. Oh gosh, come on. And um, I tend to use bicarbonate soda or baking soda for anyone in the US um, as like a second run. And what I'll do is I'll then go through like all these tiny little gaps here um, and in between here just to kind of really get a deep clean. Um, so the bicarbonate soda, it, it's like toothpaste basically. You end up just using a toothbrush and kind of scrubbing away. So I'm gonna put the entire um, front panel aside for the moment. We're gonna take off the uh, speaker and reattach it to the funny playing IPS. Um, and then this whole section we don't need anymore. I will clean up the um, the silicon pads underneath here. Um, and I'll also completely remove this and run it through a bath process. Um, and then what we've got here, the first thing I want to look at is um, whether or not these need replacing, um, whether there's any corrosion. So this side looks fine. This side 
one of them is fine, the other one is a little bit rusty, so I'll probably take that out and replace it entirely. Um, and then what we're doing as well is on this, the audio jack, we're removing it, uh, the audio jack, yeah, remo replacing the audio jack with this new one. Um, so let's get that out as well. I mean, I'm not completely convinced that this is a required upgrade, but it should be clean. It should clean up the audio jack. Um, and the individual wants to use the Game Boy for um, you know, DJing, basically LSDJ. Uh, so we'll put that in, and um, we'll also do the Pro Sound mod, which brings the uh, audio straight off the potentiometer before the uh, the volume, brings it down into uh, the jack. Mm. Where's the jack set? Oh yeah, we need to remove the old jack. This is a secondary. That's it. So this is the pro sound. Um, just fine. So we'll do that in a separate bit. Uh, first thing first is to get this out and get all the caps off. Okay, so there's the Game Boy. Um, it's actually in pretty good nick. Uh, like, there's nothing wrong with any of these capacitors, but cleaning, like removing or replacing the capacitors is gonna give you um, just a lot more life and um, it's supposed to kind of be better for the, uh, the audio as well, because there's less kind of noise on the power line. There's the cat again, wanting to get involved. Right, this is hot. So we're going to start off with the caps here. Um, strongly recommend Flux. Um, I never used Flux before and my soldering was just a mess. So we're going to use Flux to remove um, all the big caps. We're going to leave on the small caps even though... I think... Do you, does the audio go through these caps? I don't think they do. Um, but yeah, it's all the big caps that were coming off. Um, I'll probably give the power switch a bit of a clean as well. I don't think it needs much, but something would be nice. All right, let's get it on. Um, let's start with a C1. So I'm just going to take these out first, I think. Maybe I'll take it out, replace, put it in. Uh, what do I want? Tweezers. Not really doing a trick, is it? Might be easier just to cut them out, to be honest. Let's cut them out instead.
last two, um, which I believe are the same capacitance. Yeah. Um, these also deal with the audio, but I mean, the whole thing, like if there's bad capacitors, it will add noise to the power line, um, which you can end up hearing. Um, so that's why we're doing kind of a complete recap. Um, and I mean, just as a, a note, the, the white line is where it's negative, you need to make sure it's the right way around because they have uh, polarity. So, and I believe these two are the ones I actually want. Um, I'm going by this this chart, this handy chart. I got this on eBay. I, I, I got this version on eBay as well myself. It comes with three packs, one for the uh, CPU, one for the uh, display, and one for the everything else. Um, I opened the wrong pack to start off with, which is great. Um, but it always has a guide as to kind of what order things should go. So uh, it's pretty handy. Um, and I'm using that now. spraying um, isopropyl, isopropyl alcohol onto this, um, which is non-conductive, dries quickly, and basically cleans off any oils, or any of that stuff. And really what we're trying to get off is the, um, the flux that I've added, um, which I don't think I'm doing a terribly good job, but it's, it's okay. Okay, so that's the uh, recap done. What I'm going to do is um, put it back together a little bit and give it a test. In fact, I'm going to run power into it from the side here. And an easy test is to... It's not covered as tight as it should be. An easy test is to just drop some headphones into this. Well, that said, I don't know if the headphones even work, but stick my test Game Boy cart into there. Now that is gone. There it is. So this isn't actually this cart, I've got my own thing in there. Okay, well, so I heard the headphones come on. That's what I'm looking for. Um, the game cart hasn't loaded properly, I know that. So what we'll do is we'll give the, um, the cart a clean, the cart, whatever it's called, cart slot, a clean. It's probably just mixed between the Game Boy and the cart itself. Um, I don't think you can see down there. There's probably not much down there, but I'll just give it a spray. I can do that now. And i just take my test cartridge and just kind of give it a back and forth. I've just noticed there is also some corrosion on um, 
this thing. So I probably I might just take it off completely and put a new one as well. Because it's nice to do new ones. Alright, let's get some power in there again. Oh, is that part of my cartridge? It snaps off. Nice. Have to get a new car new new case for this cartridge. Extremely brittle. Oh, let's go back in. Let's get the power in. So what I'm looking for when the game loads is um, the sound to kind of go on continuously. Like that. And from this, I can hear that one of the ears is actually not as loud as the other, but we can fix that as we go along. Cool. So the recap is a success. What we'll do next is replace this with the new power. So uh, I need to make sure I get my ordering right. I just need to kind of completely desolder this and replace uh, with this one. So it goes throughout, goes around the same way. We can see red kind of at the end. Um, so if I just cleanly get this off, then I'll be able to reattach it. So on with the flux again. Hoping I can just kind of pull it off. There you go. Off. I'm breathing all kinds of fumes in. Let's get a new one on. Beautiful. Already aligned. Get a bit of flux in there. Get the solder on. Clean both these up. I need a new bit of uh, tissue in a moment. I might just trim those little spikes off as well. that as well because we can we now have that as a donor we can fix something else so that's a good power board yeah I'm gonna trim those and um, I'm expecting kind of no change Somehow the sound's actually sounding a little bit better already, even though I'm not even listening to it. So the next thing to do is we're going to do the audio mod. And the audio mod is to replace this. We need to take this part out, and where do we put it? So we need to take the audio jack out because it has a switch inside of it. So we're going to insert it into this. And this is the line out. This one here is a line out, and this is the uh, headphone. So this is stereo headphone, this is stereo line out. I'm gonna to go to pre-pop, pre which basically means um, 
on the volume wheel, we've got um, uh, it's pre part left and right up here. So we'll wire these two down into this thing so that they will then have two um, audio jacks out. Um, and we'll then, we, I mean, I will need to modify the shell so that we have two like ports basically. So this sits here. So the original port is here and I'll have a second one here. So I'll line it up and kind of work it with a, uh, a drill. So let's get this off first. Pretty much same method we used before, just kind of get some flux onto the board and then we are just going to pull it off and then I'll have to desolder the audio jack and I'll probably get it clean at the same time. out. All right, next part is this thing. So I need to desolder all, all these big chunks here, which is going to be pretty nasty. The thing to remember with these things is that um, they're pretty old and the solder is going to be like 30 years old. So it's worth using extractor fan uh, or a mask. Um, and I'm going to be using a mask in my case. This is the mask I'm using, so five layer jobby. There you go, nasty business, but done. So completely extracted from that. That is kind of useless now because this is really the important part of the entire uh, the entire audio system because it has a switch inside of it. So the switch part is, I wonder if I'm going to show you the mechanism or not. Let's have a look. So, yeah, I'll show you this mechanism in here. So the switch is what switches off the, uh, the speaker. And when this goes in, oops, when this goes in, uh, you can't really see it. There's a switch here that moves in and out. So if your speaker doesn't work, it's possible that this actually has a bit of um, corrosion down here. So it's just worth kind of IPA inside, just to fix it. And I've just had a look inside of there and it's um, kind of in, in here. I mean, there's no light here, but it's, it is pretty clean.
Okay, so let's get this attached to the new audio jack. Where has that gone? Let's put that there for a sec. Where did I put it? That just reattaches in the same way. So again with the flux. Okay, so that's what it looks like now. Now we're gonna wire this up. So the square on this is ground and kind of ground is that, that white one. So it just slots in. We should be able to solder that in as is. I'm gonna tag that one to start off with. More flux, always more flux. Okay, so that is the audio jack in, and now we need to wire, uh, where is it, left and right, over to the pre-pot over here. So, let's grab ourselves some wire. So we got right, left, pre, uh, pre pot, right, left, left, right, ground. So uh, let's just see, can I follow these traces? That's there. Oh, yeah. So um, right is yellow, so what I'm going to do is just join them up to these two bits here. That is quite a stiff wire. Should be all right. So original headphone jack, we're gonna test now. Cool. And now the pre-pop. We 
which is quieter. We're missing one of the silences. I'm sure you can hear that. Missing the right ear, which has fallen out, that's why. Okay, that's now playing out both, which is good, which is what we want. Let's remove this as well. This is just some corrosion on it, I don't like it. Have a spare sitting on my desk. Right back in there. Let's get ourselves lots of uh, solder on there again. Good. Let's fix that. Oh my gosh. Sakes, that is not straight. There you go. Okay. So that's the bulk of that work done. Next part is to um, clean this up in the sink and to take this off and put the display in. Um, what I'm gonna do is break the video and uh, stop the video and then just take this all apart um, and give it a clean. 
So I'll be back. Okay, so I have cleaned the shell. Um, hopefully you can see the difference here. Um, the way I clean it is basically to drop it in the sink, very hot water and um, just kind of like dishwasher soap, dishwasher, di di like dishes soap, um, and give it kind of a pass. Um, and then what I do afterwards is take it out and use um, bicarbonate soda or baking powder, a tiny bit of water and a toothbrush just to get into the, like the little nooks and crannies. So you can see, hopefully, this is nice and clean in here. Got rid of all the grime that was in there. Um, and the same up here. I've then gone on to um, carve out the second, like the line out uh, curve. Um, I used a, where is it, it's somewhere. So I printed a jig uh, to do the print to do the um, uh, the drilling. So the jig kind of fits onto uh, here uh, somehow. There we go like that. Um, and I drilled. I start off with a hole, and then actually it wasn't perfect. Um, so afterwards, uh, the people who made the um, uh, what is it? This 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 audio PCB also have a 3D printed um, tool. So this is the jig that I start off with. And then this is a uh, kind of a sanding bench, I guess. Just put some 600 grit in there and just kind of went at it. So um, now I've got a nice soft curve for this to fit into. So now this will fit flush. Looks pretty smart. So um, the next part is to cut around here because the funny playing display is slightly larger. So it's a pretty straightforward cut. Um, what I need to do, or what I prefer to do, is kind of run a knife um, along the edge. So it needs basically this little line. So you can see kind of there's a border. I'm going to move that border from the display. So that's the next part. Um, you watch me do that if you want. You're going to skip forward. I'm going to play it fast forward. I'm going to also the silicon as well, a little clean. Um, and I'll go over the backs, the uh, the carbon side with the uh, IPA. Um, my desk is looking very busy now after all the work I've been doing, but we're almost there. So. So what I'm starting off doing is just a score, and I prefer to score it as much as I possibly can, just to kind of completely cut through the um, the plastic before applying um, the cutters to it. So the reason for that is because I want as clean a cut as possible, even though I'm probably going to sand it afterwards anyway. Um, and in fact, what I should probably do is use same 600 grit but use it wet wet sand um, just to kind of keep the reduce the dust kind of getting in there um, and the reason for cutting it like this is that um, I don't want any kind of small pieces to end up kind of floating in front of the screen again I've done that before I sent a, a Game Boy across to um, somebody bought it and during transport a small piece of plastic dust got in front of the um, the display. Um, fortunately, they were able to use a hairdryer on the... <coughs> fortunately, they were able to use a hairdryer on the lens, get the lens off, and then remove that little piece of plastic. Um, so, it was all good in the end. But still, there's a lot of work to kind of make sure that when the lens goes in, it's clear of dust and there's nothing kind of there that will potentially get in front of the display. All right.
Okay, so it's pretty messy on the desk at the moment. Um, I don't want to do the lens with all this crap on here. Um, and what I'll do is I will use my method for cleaning the um, the desk is tape, basically. Parcel tape. So I'm just going to run parcel tape over the, um, the mat until I've got the majority, if not all, of the dust off. Um, and then I will use some air to clear this out. But now the viewport is a little bit bigger and it's ready for, um, well, it's not ready, but it's wide enough for the funny playing display to go in. But now I have to clean this up. So we're ready for the display. This is a very funky pack if you're looking at buying one of these. I think they give them away with their, their displays. Um, so what we've got here is a few pieces. So we've got a bracket that holds the uh, display in place. And in there as well is a light pipe. So the light pipe I'm not sure you can see that. Is um, we'll go into here, like that. Well, somewhere, something like that. Um, and recently they changed their boards so that it's a uh, surface mount LED. I'm not sure if you can see that, but that's where the LED is. Um, and. First thing we're going to do is actually check that display works. So there's kind of uh, there's a protective film on top of this to stop us from getting mucky at this point. I'm just going to kind of connect it up and make sure the display works. Because if it doesn't work, we're in trouble. So this is the ribbon cable that's going to go into the main board, um, and then this cable, this ribbon on the back here, goes into there. Not that way up, teeth up. Okay, and then we're going to stick the stick the game into the Game Boy. I really need to get a new case for this now. Shell for this, rather. Uh, which way is it going? It's going this way. I'm not sure if you can see that, but basically folding this down to go into the the display port. It's not going in. There you go. Let's get the power again. So that's the display working, which we expect. So undo all this. And what are we going to do? We are going to take this back out. And start assembling the front. So we need this part go onto the back of the board, slide the ribbon out, and give it a gentle little push into its place. These are delicate screens, 
so you want to be very careful with them. And then this needs to come off. So what I'm going to do is lay down just a little piece of fabric just to keep any more dust off of there. And I also keep this piece. When I remove this, um, I use this to potentially take off any um, dust that might appear on the lens. So remember to put the light pipe in. Then we are going to put the buttons in. the silicone is down I'm going to give the silicone a wipe where is the silicone there it is with the isopropyl alcohol and that went all over my hands right we just cleaned it I don't know how much your camera is shaking while I'm doing that. I'm sorry if it is. Okay, that'll do. All right, so that's those parts. In fact, actually, I've got a little rig that I made. So I'm gonna put that underneath here. That just keeps the screen off and also kind of lets me get the buttons flush. So ah, the one bit we're missing is the speaker which we removed earlier um, and this needs to go this way around and this polarity doesn't really matter as long as it goes in. So let's pop that through. Just set that down there. Let's get some of our friend Flux on there. And then I've lost my solder, there it is. Clean again. Cool. And we're ready to insert. So let's pop the speaker down. Get that down there. And let's get this into.
this okay? No, it's okay. No, no, there we go. Okay. Now we're going to screw this back in. Um, and one of the lessons I've learned with this is that when you screw the uh, display wall back in, you want to make sure that this has clearance. Um, so you can screw it in too tight um, where that gets stuck, which you don't want. Obviously, because then you can't change brightness or the theme or anything like that. So as I'm screwing, I'm just kind of testing this every now and then. And then usual trick, screw to the left and then screw to the right. Once you get that click, because you're looking for where the thread is. Yeah, that's fine. Then once the right hand side is tightened in, then it's all good. You don't need to worry about how tight it is on this side usually. And it's still worth doing a test before you close it all up again. But it's if the right hand side is fine, then it's a good chance that it's gonna be fine after you screwed in the left hand side. to load this into the back of the board. So I took the um, the metal out, didn't I? So let me put that back in again. Never remember which way around this guy is. I think that a wipe as well. Just wary of the liquid, any liquid left over from the um, the clean that I did. Pretty sure on this side is dry, but just noticed a little bit of water on this side, which we don't want. Absolutely, do not want. That's fine. All right. So the one thing I'm not too sure about is the thickness of this wire. I feel like I may have gone too thick on um, 
those wires, so we'll see. But I wanted to do a little clean of the, the power, didn't I? So let's just get a little spray into there. So this is contact and alcohol and I mean it's not quite alcohol at all, but contact cleaner. I mean I don't think there's much point in taking that completely apart. It was working before. It's working now, I'm just giving it a bit of a clean, hopefully remove some of that carbon that's builds up over the t over time. Just to go off camera, just to make sure there's no corrosion down in the um, in the teeth. There's not. All right, let's get this into here. Why are we not going in straight? There we go. And then just need to move this wire a little bit. Obviously, this wire is sitting right in front of that screw port, which we don't want. That's fine, they're nice and thick, which means I can reroute it. The question is whether or not it's flush enough to get the, um, the back on without any issue. So we'll find out. Let's pop these screws in. Every time I put the power in, I always either forget it or put it in the wrong spot. Which is what I was about to do then. Ribbon to go between these two. Again, I doubt you can see this, so I'm just trying to aim it so that I can see. That's in. I'm going down. There's sod. Yeah, that wire is just too thick. Darn this wire. Okay.
something's not flush up here. Can't see what it is there. That's not in the way, right? But there's, like this is falling forward, so there's something stopping this from being completely flush. Because I can see that, and maybe it just needs to be pushed, I don't know. Something doesn't quite feel right. Try that again. Maybe it just needs encouraging. I don't know. I don't know. It's just tight. Okay. I think it's just tight. Okay. I'm gonna push it back down. And I'm gonna get this screwed in. Okay, so we've sealed it. Everything's flush, but I've got a little bit of um, dust on there, which is exactly the reason why I kept this. So I could pop the dust off. So a couple of final touches. We've got cat is trying to get involved. Whoa! I know. Cat's trying to get involved here. So I actually ended up with a lot of terminals, but um, what I'd like to do is put in the same type. And I've got W2 here. I 
didn't wash the back case. Oh my god. So that's the back. Completely forgot to clean it. Oh, that's a shame. Kind of letting the team down there. All right, be back in a minute. Clean this. After the clean. Last touch, sticker. There you go. So, I'm going to leave this on. I'm going to give it a test with a test cartridge. Get a pixel mode. So that's the left and right working. And what I'm going to do is also test the headphones <coughs> with SDJ. These are my custom builds of LSDJ. Like the hardware is my custom build part. Which is just a little bit snug going in. Get the headphones in. I mean the headphones down here don't really make any difference, but um So the audio is pretty clean. What's interesting is that um, line out jack has actually killed the speaker, which is Unexpected. But that's all done. So <clears throat> that is going to be popped back into the post and sent off to its owner. This was a very long video, but um, hopefully useful to someone. Cheers.